In this video, let's look at the results from usability study and how to quickly gain insights. So the usability studies are unmoderated. This means that the study organizer does not have to be present when people are taking part in the study and any number of people can take part at the same time. You decide when a study is complete and you have the option to close the study to prevent additional people. As and when people complete the study, the results automatically update. What you see here is the study overview report. It's been designed to generate quick insights without having to review the session for each and every participant. From here, you can see how many people completed the task and the average time required. In this example, the first task was completed by 9 of 11 participants. So naturally, this is the one we should be inspecting in more detail. Clicking on the task item will show a more detailed report for each participant. The detailed report shows the metrics for each one. That is, whether they completed the task, whether it took them longer than average, and the number of steps or clicks required. We can see that the last two participants were marked as unsuccessful because they needed guidance to complete the task. If you see a play option listed for the participant, you can watch a recording of their session to understand exactly what happened. And clicking on the play will launch the video player in a new tab. Now to make it easy to understand what happened during a session, the timeline is annotated with markers. The color and shape of the markers represent whether they use the prototype as expected. If there are no usability issues, you may only see the blue circles as markers, which is not the case here. The red markers are shown when there are interactions we did not expect. You can of course play back the entire video or jump straight to the portion where you see the red markers. If the participant enabled voice and camera, you will be able to see their face and hear them as they use the prototype. You can switch between participants or tasks using the navigation on top or use the arrow keys left and right to switch between participants and the up or down arrow to switch between tasks. As you're reviewing the video, you can also add notes to record your observations. This will also add a note marker in the timeline. Now this is handy if multiple people are going to be analyzing the video. If you created the usability study in a group workspace, other members will automatically have access. If for some reason a video is not available, you can view a clickback report for each participant to see exactly where they clicked in the prototype. Now, in addition to video recordings and click maps, you will see a sub report that reveals how participants use the prototype. This report is useful if you have designed multiple ways to complete the task and you're looking to find out which was more popular. The task flow defined by the study organizer when setting up the task is shown as the recorded flow. If more than one user uses a different flow, it'll be captured as an alternate flow. You can see how many people use the recorded flow versus the alternate flow. If each participant completed the task in their own way, it'll be captured as a unique flow. It's called unique flow because there are no overlapping sequences or steps amongst the participants. So to sum up, the reports have been designed to surface interesting incidents automatically and in a hierarchical format. Having videos is great, but it's also a very rich format and time consuming to analyze. This report will help you identify the videos you need to watch first. And if for some reason video recordings are not available, you can always view click maps. And that's a quick lesson on how to generate insights from usability reports.